This is the guy who had three weeks ago couldn't walk apparently, and now he's in the air, face tucked into his own hole, and he's about to land <laughs> perfectly. Like this looks pretty, this doesn't look uh, hard on the Achilles at all, bro. Boom, smash, perfect landing, nothing to it, bro. What's up guys, Derek, marplacemart8.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Artur Deloyan. I don't know if that's how you say it. Wins Olympic gold three months after tearing his Achilles. And go figure, he is <clears throat> a Russian athlete. So as you know, the Russians have the pretty good uh, repu <laughs> reputation for uh, you know doping in the Olympics, if you've ever seen Icarus. If you, have, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you go watch it. One of the most compelling um, documentaries about is it, I don't even know if you'd classify it as a documentary, but it's a fucking thrilling tale of uh, the uh, state-sponsored doping program. And uh, Arthur seems to have made a miraculous recovery after only three months, torn his Achilles entirely, and now he is, you know, competing on the world stage, winning gold for his country. And, of course, the comment section is inundated with shit about drugs. So, you know, a few months ago, he tore his Achilles, and then this is what he is... Uh, looking like on the uh, on the stage here. Just fucking full blast, goddamn full tilt. What was that a triple front flip, lands perfectly. Achilles looking money. Is he natural? That's what we're gonna be getting into. So the, this is determination at its best, at Real Arthur. So that's his uh, handle, I guess. Um, Sports Center, 25 year old Russian gymnast Archer Daladoyan torn his, tore his Achilles three months ago. Today he helped lead the Russian Olympic Committee to a gold medal. So, as far as I know, a torn Achilles can take upwards of like a year to like recover plus regain full strength. Now, if you're an athlete who is, you know, has the best team in your corner, your, you know, entire life revolves around your performance and shit, you're not like a guy who just some regular fucking Joe. And you have like optimum nutrition, you have optimal sleep hygiene, you have optimal everything, optimal coaches, recovery practices. You know, I'm sure you can cut that down like significantly, especially being a young, healthy guy who's obviously very fit. But three months is fucking pushing it for a guy to, I just spit all over my screen, for a guy to end up back in the Olympics and literally crushing like insane athletic maneuvers. Like I can't bring up all the examples of uh, his you know, maneuvers and shit, because I'll just get copyrighted. But if you go look it up, like, the guy is killing it, obviously. He won the gold medal. He does, like, insane fucking acrobatics. The guy can do triple flips off of a fucking, you know, springboard. He's insane. And um, you can imagine that's a lot of stress to put on your Achilles, literally sprinting across the goddamn, whatever you call it, turf, launching yourself off a fucking platform, doing a flip in the air, and then landing full gravity weight on your fucking Achilles smashing into the ground after flipping three times in the air and landing perfectly and having no, no like, you know, imbalances or anything either when you're landing, landing perfectly stationary, having the exact proportional support between both legs and making it look absolutely flawless. So this guy's obviously, you know, recovered enough for it to be suspect as fuck. Um, this is his team um, crying, I guess, at the outcome. And this is him looking alpha as fuck. Like, what's good? I just fucking flipped three times, landed perfectly, and I had a torn Achilles a few months ago. So anyways, drug test the ROC team right now, LMAO, says Tommy Ziegler. And this is the top comment. Uh, let's see what the uh, thread says here. Wada don't have enough cash. Plus, they probably don't use long esters if they are smart. Well, yeah, I'd fucking hope not. If they were smart, they would have him on HGH as it helps recovery from injuries. We will ROC you. <laughs> Then drugs as USA as well. Face palm clown emoji. Watch out, we got a commie in here. LOL, crying laughing face. Trained in the red room. Uh-oh, commie alert. Siren. You know that Russia's entire team tested positive for PEDs in 2016, right? I know, right? Don't know why they were allowed to show up. So obviously this is controversial. The fact that they're even allowed to compete right now, given their, you know, historical, like very fucking recent uh, use and like blatantly trying to skirt around the rules. Um, not suspicious at all. <laughs> um, I mean, to be fair, if he's doing rings only, his Achilles only needs to be good enough to land once on a super padded mat. If he's doing a floor routine, he's on steroids 100%. He did floor exercise and that beam jump. On top of that, the commentator said that three weeks ago, we couldn't stand on his foot. Three weeks ago, and now he's landing on his feet, no problem. 
This is definitely not. <laughs> like I fucking pause it, and this is what we. See. <laughs> this is what we see. Like this is the guy who had three weeks ago couldn't walk apparently, and now he's in the air, face tucked into his own butthole, and he's about to land <laughs> perfectly. Like this looks pretty. This doesn't look uh, hard on the Achilles at all, bro. Boom, fucking smash. Perfect landing. Nothing to it, bro. So obviously, you know, just rings, bro. Just rings. Um, no, nah, I was watching. He was doing bars and pummel horse and everything. <laughs> bro, no way a normal person can do all that on a torn Achilles tendon in LMAO. This is fraud. It's not torn. Three months ago, he injured it, got surgery a day later, and a day later, started rehab. Doctors recommend rehab four months after. Also, ROC athletes are constantly tested for a month before an Olympic competition. Well, we all know how fucking well that worked out last time. Putin probably got him on that good stuff to recover from that injury. Or cloned him. <laughs> That's a possible outcome too. My goodness, it's almost like he received miracle drugs. Roids, lol. Three months torn Achilles, how? I hope you're joking for the memes. No, this is literally just how a typical Russian is built. I... Not talking about how he's built. I'm talking about the fact that he recovered from an Achilles tear in three months. Please tell me you dead ass think the average Russian is built like this. Can't believe people this dumb exist. Typical Russian lives off vodka, yams, and steroids. It's a joke, bro. You need to find some inner peace to calm down. All right. So, um, you know, everyone's saying roids, lots of vodka, drug test him. Russians built different on roids. It's like pretty much every fucking thing is about drugs here. So it's like, did he, you know, skirt around the test? Did he pull an Icarus or what exactly happened? Um, well, first of all, what a lot of people don't realize is some of these peptides that are actually useful for recovery are not actually being tested for, despite the fact that you would assume, okay, what is banned substance list? It's pretty fucking comprehensive. You know, we have every goddamn thing under the sun. We have anabolics, every steroid. We have peptide hormone growth, growth factors. Related substances and mimetics sounds pretty comprehensive. Beta-2 agonists, hormone and metabolic modulators, diuretics and masking agents, all the prohibited methods, stimulants, narcotics, cannabinoids, glucocorticoids, beta blockers. The thing's pretty fucking comprehensive, don't get me wrong. But when we actually scroll down to the section that actually would encompass the peptides, which are used for angiogenesis, things for reinforcing structural integrity of tendons, for example, this is where you'd find stuff like you know, growth hormone, things that are useful in this capacity. But notably, you know, we have things like obviously EPO and whatnot. Could EPO be useful? Sure. Is he going to be using it for this? Probably not. Not really worth the risk. Peptide hormones and the releasing factors. And by the way, this is like not even close to the most important thing. I'm just saying for, you know, enhanced angiogenesis, like there's a lot of things on the table. This section would certainly be something you could look at, but this would be not worth the risk profile given his event. Um, not that people aren't using EPO, but again, what would be the point when he is a uh, gymnast, you know? So peptide hormones and the releasing factors. This is mainly what we are getting into and growth factors and growth factor modulators. So is he going to be using, um, you know, GH frag, uh, GHRHs, synthetic GHRPs, things that are going to stimulate endogenous production of growth hormone like anamorelin, ipamorelin, MK677, GHRP2, hexarelin, ipamorelin. Stuff like that. No, because it's highly detectable and synthetic and it's not something that's going to be, uh, you're going to get away with. It's a fucking terrible idea. You would be much better off leveraging just bioidentical GH, which to be honest, I would not be surprised if he's doing. Above and beyond that, now again, are they testing for GH? Sort of, you know? They're going off of um, basically red flags in biological passport and your urine analysis, which frankly is kind of, it's not like there are red flags because they're not testing IGF-1 levels, which makes no sense given the fact that it is a very useful method of detecting growth hormone abuse, in my opinion. Although, obviously, there is room for manipulation if you stay within therapeutic limits. Again, just randomly picking people out of a hat to decide to GH test using a differential amino assay is not exactly the most effective way to do it because obviously the resources do not support having randomized testing in every single test. Are they testing for GH? No, they're not. And frankly, I'd be surprised if they're doing it often at all. So this is obviously something that's highly abused, I think, in the professional sports world still. And this is something that you can also circumvent even the analysis techniques that they're using when they're deploying isoform differential immunoassay by using a truly bioidentical preparation that does not just leverage, you know, a 22 kill adult and variant of the isoform of recombinant HGH, would the Russians have access to this kind of technology to make this shit? No shit. 100%. There's fucking, you know, 
people able to get their stuff even as like, you know, gym rat bodybuilders are able to get like pretty novel shit nowadays from China. Like it's not that hard for people to figure out in my opinion. With people with high resources, the right fucking knowledge in their camp, having the right chemists, it's not that hard. I think GH is probably definitely in the equation here. However, what else is useful? So, you know, you're probably thinking of things like TB500, things of this nature, but again, these are banned. Thymosin beta-4 and its derivatives, EG, TB500, platelet-derived growth factor, mechanical growth factors, IGF-1, hepatocyte growth factor, fibroblast growth factors. Now again, actually identifying things like bioidentical IGF-1, how easy is that to do? You know, not the fucking easiest, but again, why would you be choosing things that are super highly detectable when you could be using something that's not even on the list whatsoever, like BPC-157, like the most fucking well-known healing compound there is in the peptide world. This is like the most prevalently used and effective healing agent. You know, obviously TB500 is up there as well, but BPC-157, super effective. Is it being tested for? No. So why the fuck would he not be using it? This is something, again, that's going to cut your recovery time down significantly. What else? You know, GHK copper, things of this nature are things that you can add into your regimen that they're not even testing for. It's not like you're cheating. So if you're using these drugs, is it even cheating? You know, the growth hormone, yeah, I guess, but it's like if you're getting around the tests, you know, adequately, they can't really determine that it's not just endogenously produced. And then above and beyond that, certain peptides that are very useful for uh, recovery and whatnot are, like, there's no fucking, like, limitation to how much you're using or how you're using it. You could use it fucking year around if you wanted to and get away with it. You can use it in competition. You can use it as, like, a... <laughs> Like prophylactically, you could do whatever the fuck you want with it. So I would not be surprised if he's just using a lot of basic shit that they're just not even looking for. BPC-157, GHK, like this kind of stuff is going to help so much and make your recovery expedited by such a significant amount that you could, you know, perhaps recover in a few months. And again, we don't know the severity of everything, you know? It seems like there's some uh, ambiguity in, you know, how bad this tear really was. And again, it sounds like, you know, he got into surgery the next day. He was already starting his recovery regimen the day after. Like, the guy was on top of his shit. He has the best nutrition, the best team in his corner, probably, the best everything. Is on peptides, probably on growth hormone, is using everything in his arsenal that he can be doing, and deploying the max dose of shit that is not being tested for. Like, it's, like you can use whatever the fuck dose you want, just crank the shit out of it, and get expedited recovery to such a significant extent that it's going to look like, oh, this guy must be on steroids for the recovery, like... No, he's probably just using like fucking shit they're not testing for. Is he on gear too? Like, I don't know. I'd have to look more into the sport and more into his progression over the years and whatnot. But as far as if he's using drugs to heal faster, of course he is. But he's probably using a lot of shit that they're just not looking for. Because frankly, they have not deemed them to be compounds of abuse yet. Or things that are going to be performance enhancing or recovery enhancing in some significant capacity. Why exactly? You know, that's uh, you know a good question. Because these are obviously very helpful. But again, if they're not testing for them, fucking push the shit out of them. Why not? You know, it's not illegal. It's not banned. It's not anything. So, you know, go fucking have at him. So I think that's what he's doing. I think this is uh, at minimum what he's doing. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that is what helped him recover so quickly. So I don't think there's anything, you know, crazy uh, special about his protocol. Do I think GH is in the equation? Probably, but I don't think it really extends like that far above and beyond that. Like, sure, you might have some novel peptides in there that are undetectable. Wouldn't be surprised if they have chemists who are synthesizing this kind of shit. Because again, it's not like that difficult to create novel agents nowadays if you have the money for it. But the traditional tried and true compounds like the BPCs are probably going to be in there at heavy fucking dosages to promote this healing as fast as possible. And obviously it was effective because the guy is back and fucking cranking out triple front flips with his face in his butthole landing perfectly. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. Much appreciated if you're watching the, the Olympics. Uh, what do you think in general so far? I've not really been tuning in. So, you know, anything helps the algorithm. It's much appreciated. Maybe I'll, you know, dig into some of the content if it is uh, worthwhile. If you think there's a, anything, uh, I don't know, content worthy that I could be watching and make a video about, let me know. All of it is much appreciated. And uh, anything else as far as, uh, you know, following me on other social media, I'm on Instagram, at more plates, more dates, Facebook, I'm on Snapchat. I was on BitChute. I was. Not anymore, though. Snap, <laughs> Snapchat, uh, TikTok, I have a podcast. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, it's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home, Gorilla Mind. Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas. I designed myself from scratch, recommended lab tests and diagnostics through my HRT clinic to get 
um, high quality diagnostics and biomarkers assessed by professionals who are actually aware of how to design an intelligently created protocol for your individual needs. Um, all the medications are shipped right to your door, or if you just want labs, you know, you can order them through our lab builder. We have the most user-friendly lab builder, in my opinion. You know, the prices are very competitive and we have the assays that are actually accurate as opposed to cheap amino assays that are going to cross the tech synthetic anabolics and give you inaccurate estradiol readings and shit like that. So if you want to get high quality services, you can check that out and anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below and help support the channel. So it's much appreciated when you guys use those links and coupon codes and whatnot. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.